Uh, welcome back to the Hearthstone Major at PAX East, presented by One Nation of Gamers. My name is TJ. I am joined by that's admirable karate chopping his way onto the, the casting desk, the metaphorical casting desk here. We're about to jump into the second semifinal. Uh, so we're only two matches away from finding a winner here uh, at the Hearthstone Major at PAX East. It's going to be Dakota taking on Super JJ. Now, Dakota is one of the players that qualified to the Open. Uh, I looked him up during the break. He does have a, a Twitch channel, so he 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 actually streams Overwatch, uh, I think, primarily, which is which is kind of cool. Um, and Super JJ, of course, a player for Team Complexity, who we've actually seen featured on stream three times now. Uh, so, what are your thoughts going into the, the, this second semifinal uh, with sort of a, a known player versus an underdog here? Admirable. Yeah, I mean, um, I mean, kind of a long time pro for complexity now. At this point, Super JJ, um, you know, a cu- couple of good wins under his belt as well. I mean, this guy has been a force in competitive play, really, really well regarded in the pro community. Also, um, but from what I've seen from Dakota so far, very, very patient, very calculated player. The only thing that that I have to really question about is his Reno Warlock build, which looks extremely unconventional, but his play has been very tight. And it looks very strong so far. So Super JJ, if, if anything, needs to not underestimate Dakota in this match um, if he's unfamiliar with him because this guy can play. Yeah, definitely. And we saw it earlier uh, earlier in the day. And, well, I, I believe he upset Amnesiac, if I remember correctly, uh, in the round of eight to move on to the semifinals. Uh, so this should be an exciting match. Uh, once again, Super JJ uh, has his... Well, no, no, we... Dakota just doesn't want to play against Rogue. That's just how it is. He banned out Amnesiac's Rogue, and now he's going to go ahead and ban out Super JJ's Rogue. So I, I guess he feels like it's super weak to his lineup. I'm, I'm not necessarily sure I agree, but maybe he just doesn't like to play against it. Yeah, well, I mean, the Druid versus Rogue matchup actually is kind of tough, in my opinion. Um, mm-hmm. And his hand, his uh, his Reno build is very top-heavy, which gives Rogue a lot of time to set up. You, like, you don't kind of, kind of have those mid rangey threats where you can pressure them, really. It's kind of like... You know, he had Mountain Giant in his bill, and that's like Rogue can very easily beat those kinds of cards with the right setup. And he's even got a copy of Ragnaros uh, in his build as well. So, I mean, giving you an idea of how much top end is in here, he just probably doesn't want to be playing against a deck that can get big tempo swings and big burst swings to clear his board and keep pushing. Yeah, so we'll see if how well it's going to do against the Zoo Warlock. A lot of times, Rena Warlock does have decent matchups against it, but it's all dependent on the how timely uh, those AOA, AOE spells uh, are drawn. Uh, so we'll see. It does have Demon Wrath in his opening hand. does have some good early minions, but Ancient Watcher. It's yeah, not a common been, inclusion. Yeah, very interesting one. I, I mean, didn't necessarily expect to see that. Super Dead just go ahead and take the trade with the Abyss Sergeant. And okay, Juggles. I'm curious where you'd want him to land. Well, Imp King boss is looking pretty good here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the Sunfear Protector on the Ancient Watcher brings me back to many months ago. The good old the, days. The good old days, yeah. Back in my day, Ancient Watcher plus Sunfear Protector was used in Druid. I remember the playing that Ancient Watcher in, uh, in all my early Druid builds. I remember when we were practicing for Fight Night, I was playing against Chalky, and I was like, you know, I think one Wild Growth actually might be really good in the Druid Mirror. He was like, what? I was like, man, if you guys turn to Wild Growth, like, you're just playing Fire Drops before they are. He's like, yeah, try it. I was like, I think this is pretty good. He's like, yeah, let's go with it. Let's go with one Wild Growth. <laughs> and then years later... <laughs> Double Wild Growth is the most hated combo net combination of cards. One of the most hated. But that was the beginning. That's Back crazy to day, think how... used to complain about Nat Paggle, all right, guys? Yeah, well, Nat Paggle used to draw it at the end of your turn. So it was just a 0-4 that just could draw you cards for free. Free cycle. I had four health. I uh, but... <laughs> yeah, me either. This is going to line up pretty nicely for the uh, Demon Wrath if he decides to use it. And JJ is going to go ahead and and push that damage toward the face. 
Does he feel like he needs to use that though? He could just tap and dark bomb. Actually, it seems like a, a more reasonable option. That's kind of what I was looking at. Is tap dark bomb and clear the two one with the, uh, your imp is looking pretty good. Now the problem yeah. with this is that um, you're not really making any progress on the board. But his deck isn't really so much about progress as JJ's is. So as long as he can kind of keep things in check, I think he has the time. He also has the Reno Jackson in hand. So the the like. The life he loses from this little bit of tempo is likely not that big of a concern to him. Mm. Oh! That's going to be a big concern to him, though. Yeah, Demon Wrath doesn't do too well against a board full of imps. So, just Void Caller seems like it's going to be the play, but no demons in the hands. This is going to be a 3-4. A, a of course, Super JJ does not know that that's the case. It might feel like he just needs to trade into this um, anyway. I mean, he can Iron Beak Owl plus Dire Wolf Alpha and get some really solid trades in. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of feeling that Iron Beak Owl this turn. The last thing I think Super JJ needs is something huge to come out of this and as a result be in trouble from it. So from his perspective, Iron Beak Owl and then trade in two little guys and then push for four points of damage seems like a pretty good deal. Yeah. Yeah, that's what he's going to go for. And Dakota already starting to get pretty low on this health total. Uh, he's going to go down to 14 already, going in, uh, rolling into turn 6. Uh, Hellfire, okay. That's quite a bit better. Yeah, I mean, any pickup to, to help clear this board position off is going to be pretty good for him right now. But how does he want to go about it? Does he fit in a tap? That's five damage he's going to take this turn. He goes down to nine. There'll be one window of opportunity for Super JJ to Leroy Jenkins power overwhelming. Have exactly that for lethal. But I think Dakota's definitely willing... Oh, not willing to take the risk. Yeah. He's been, like I said, he's been very calculated with his play so far. Yeah. Man, we're going to be rich, boys. I mean, at this stage, I think it's probably worth it to go for that tap. Your opponent has to have exactly two card out with exact as much mana, but I suppose when you've made it this far into the tournament, not taking too many risky plays, you, you might as well just keep doing what you're doing. Yeah, JJ finds a Mortal Coil and a Flame Imp. He's going to go with Mortal Coil here, so that is looking like trade. Wind Fury! Ooh! Yeah. I, have, I think I take the trade here just to activate the Mortal Coil, but it is... It is darn tempting to just push that damage. And Dakota is going to thank the light that he has this Demon Wrath because that oh, yeah. guy would have delivered next turn. So Implosion on Piloted Shredder, a common play in this format. <laughs> Something I totally don't have a problem with. Oh, combine oh, it with Knife Juggler. Yeah, this is great. This is this is Hearthstone. <laughs> we're, we're, cut <laughs> we're cutting this play off at its knees. Blizzard is, is is dulling the the knife juggler's knives going into the uh, going into standard. Yeah, got to protect the knife juggler with that trade. Mm -hmm. um, Ragnaros actually doesn't look too bad right here, um, simply because you can taunt it up in the following turns. So this is yeah. a totally fine drop for Dakota at this point. You know, nothing spectacular is going to happen because of this shot, but still looking pretty good for him. And certainly Super JJ sees that and is a little bit uneasy. Yeah, but I don't know if he, he really cares about it right now. He can just ignore it. As, as long as he doesn't see a taunt, he's, these chuggles are going into, the, going into the rag. So all of a sudden taunting this up doesn't feel nearly as appealing. But at that point, you really don't have a choice. I think and, you kill it. Yeah, I mean, if that goes to face, I'll... Okay. Oh, well, here we go. That's what I meant by it, his face. That's what I meant by... by Kill's it. face. Yep. Yeah. Totally. Malganus. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's either out Malganus or tap and play Sunfury Protector and Defender of Argus. Well, you can see what you get from the tap. Yeah, it depends. It's crazy. Okay. I'll take well, it. Yeah, that's a, a slightly better than the aforementioned play. Actually, quite a bit better. Oh, that's not a good one. Oh my gosh, that is horrible. That's oh. the worst one. Yeah. 
And JJ can push a, can push through this and leave stuff on the board. I mean, this is getting, it's getting a little interesting here. I mean, JJ has to invest a lot of his board to clear this out. I, wonder. I don't think he's too worried about that. I mean, he doesn't really have to invest that much. He does have a power of a woman to help push through. He's got some juggles, too. So I've seen the juggle lands. Ah, uh, now power of a woman uh, makes this a nice, yeah. that makes clean it kill. And then he can just trade in the Nerubian plus the other 2-2. Two -two. Yeah, I think oh. he wants to trade in the uh, Voidwalker if he could. So Nerubian 2-2 two -two is what this will be. And then... We'll see if he wants to trade off the 2-1 or go face. I imagine he wants to trim against Shadow Flame if he can. That's exactly what he's going to do. Down to 8 is Dakota. Oh. Well, that was a pretty good trim against Shadow Flame. Yeah. I, I mean, it's got to be Big Game Hunter Shadow Flame right here, right? You still leave 1-1s on the board, though. But well, at this point, options... you don't really have a choice. Yeah, you can suicide the Malganus, I suppose, if you wanted to, but I, I think this is a better play. Yeah, but just play the Sunfear Protector. Oh, it feels bad. You see the contest. I mean, there's a chance that Super JJ just whiffs on the next couple draws. Uh, Nerubian Egg without an activator is a whiff. Ipgate Boss is not that strong. If Malganus sticks around for a turn... This is looking scary. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's a that's a big drop right now. He's just 9-7, trade with your guy. JJ needs Power Overwhelming or, or, or Leroy to answer this. Whoa. Well, the Beast of Sergeant definitely helps. So the Taunt blocks the, one of the attacks here, it looks like, unless Iron Peak Owl is going to hit from, from Dakota. Does right he there. have three damage in his deck somewhere? Oh, but he's got a Sludge Belcher. Wow. I think Dakota might have just won this game. Sludge Belcher Silence, connect for nine. Yeah. Super J is going to have five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven damage to spread out on the board. In order to kill, he would need to get through 18 points of damage. Because he would need to get to 7 health of a Sludge Belcher, 5 health of a Malganus. Well, an Owl of his own... Plus 6 health. ...actually would probably win it too. Yeah, an Owl yeah. of his own. But Dakota sees the play. It. Yeah, if he's going dome on this one, he's got to try to end this game right now. He's going to push this damage on the Super JJ and say, you deal with it now. Flame Imp, no help. Oh no. That's it. And, uh, he can... No, he can't clear everything off the board. He can't even clear the Malganus off the board. Yeah. Wow, wow, what a close series, but Dakota inches it out. Back and forth. I'll tell you what, sometimes the 9-7 that makes you immune is good enough. <laughs> sometimes it is. Wow, what a, what a match. I, I felt like Dakota was just so far behind at so many points, but... Uh, just eking out, and you know that's 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 the difference, I guess. Uh, having Reno Jackson early, having some big threats to follow up after board clears—that's what you need. And he found him at the right time. So, Super JJ now on the back foot. Dakota, sort of the underdog story here. Not very well known. Um, I think is it's sort of an understatement actually. And he's got a game up in the semifinals here. Yeah, I mean that Reno Jackson really was a catalyst to that entire game. Without the Reno. A uh, very different one, but that's why you play cards, is so you can draw them. Yeah. So, pretty darn good start for Dakota here. Innovate Shade, Piloted Shredder, and Wrath. Super JJ's hand is heavy very early on, and Dakota even picks the option to coin Wild Growth, roll into Shade, and save the Innovate for a better time. So, this is like, I mean, this is pretty much one of the most fantastic opens I think he could have had. Yeah. He's going to go with turn one Shredder into Wild Growth into Shade. Uh, very common also for players uh, when they're playing Druid to get development first uh, when they have Interpay and Wild Growth and then ramp afterwards. So I, I'm actually a, a big proponent of this style of play as well. Mm. 
They would have liked to see it the other way around. Shade first into wild growth into powder shredder, but this puts more power on the board immediately. Um, so this actually is going to end up being quite a bit better. So now he can roll. Now he can play shade and just keep pushing into that damage. Super Jade is already going to be at 17 health. Ah, uh, actually, I think there's a lot of merit in trading into the board here. Yeah. Yeah. I like the trade here, I think, as well. Um, oh, big juggle. Oh, no. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. Almost hits it. Yeah, a little bit of a surprise to see Darnass Sasprin here. I guess the big question for Dakota is going to be how much faith does he have as an ability to uh, not believe that Super JJ has implosion. So in this instance, like we can see from the hands that if Dakota chooses to attack with the shade, it's actually pretty massive for him. He's going to go for it too. Wow. I'm loving the power plays. Dakota, I mean, Dakota has, has said bring it at pretty much every single opportunity, and it's been paying off for him. Establishing dominance. And I think JJ might feel pressured here and have to yeah, pick up this, this soul fire and throw it at the shade to just stop the damage. But Dakota actually hasn't even used wild growth this game. Yeah. It's just going to be stranded in his hand. Dr. Boom gets discarded. Oh, oh man. The hits keep coming and they don't stop coming. Yeah. This, uh, <laughs> he's losing the board. He's just, he's just spreading out his threats. Well, this and says enable Sea Giant. I, th but it might be too late. You play Sea Giant this turn. You're staring at nine damage next turn. You're looking at a, a, a Leroy, Le or sorry, uh, pfft, not Leroy. Um, swipe, Savage Roar, Druid Savage Roar, Swipe, Force of Nature. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and that's just going to do it. Wow. Bring in the heat, Dakota. That that attack from the shade helped enable this situation. I mean, Super JJ had to answer it and did not have an implosion to take care of it. And Dakota is just, just saying, answer it. And a lot of times when you play that sort of aggressive style, your opponents have to have the right sequence of cards to deal with everything that you've done. So when they stumble, you just get you just naturally get ahead in the game. And we've been seeing Super JJ just be on sort of the uh the poor side of the luck, not really having the answers to what's going on. Yeah, and Super JJ, up until this point, has actually had some pretty clutch draws in a lot of his series. Uh, that was sort of the name of the game earlier in some of his matchups, but, you know, um, he's not getting them this time around, and now he's in a rough spot. He's going to have to beat Tempo Mage three times in a row, and Tempo Mage is one of those decks that can just get the nuts. Yeah, and speaking of that, this is actually like one of those situations where it, it can occur too. You know, this Zoo versus Tempo Mage is very Zoo heavy favored. But when they have Flame Waker and Arcane Blast and Frostbolt, they can get a Gun Stable Portal, they can get the discounts of Sorcerer's Apprentice. Like, this is the kind of game that Dakota can win. Yeah. Uh, I'm coining that. <laughs> <laughs> That's a 3 5. Right, that's the Dragon King Sorcerer. It's kind of small. Yeah, it's Dragon King Sorcerer. Yeah. How brave I mean, is he feeling? Not yeah, he, he opts to he opts to save the coin, uh, which he he's going to go for a big Flame Waker turn here, uh, shortly. It just depends on how long he he's going to wait in order to do that. Next turn, he's got Flame Waker plus coin plus Arcane Blast, which is. Four missiles total plus two missile or plus two directed damage uh, with the arcane blast. But this is one of the hardest matchups for this deck, and uh, it still might not be enough. Dakota might be feeling maybe a bit regretful that he sort of wasted a, a great hand against Zoo Warlock. Because even if you have a great hand with Tempo Mage, if the Zoo Warlock has a great hand, they're probably going to beat you. I mean, honestly, he may not even have to Flame Waker this turn. He yeah, maybe was. Another one, yeah. yeah, I mean, this is looking totally okay. I mean, the Nerubian Egg certainly making this pretty scary. Yeah, when your opponent goes this wide, you definitely right. are probably going to take your Flame Waker turn. Yeah. Um, because you also need to stop Sea Giant. 
Yeah. You, you have basically five good missiles for the first round, and then you have Arcane Blast. You just don't want a missile to hit the Flame Imp, and you don't want them to hit eggs. I mean, that's okay. It's definitely not the result he's looking for, though. Job done. All right, needs to hit these one ones. Yeah, okay. The, uh, the, the rolls weren't good enough here because he actually didn't stop Sea Giant from getting summoned in this position, and that's a big problem, I think. Super JJ just going to go for uh, for the knife juggler and the peddler here. I don't. I definitely don't blame him for this. Uh, just being able to to answer things is super important. So getting the right juggles at the right time. But he. Unless this juggle, unless he gets a juggle on the flame worker, he can't clear it off. That's risky. Well, the other way, if he plays the sea giant and just gets fireballed, that's also kind of bad. Um, that's true. Well, that juggle hit the the sorcerer's apprentice. I guess he has one extra juggle with the. Oh. Uh, oh man, he needs this juggle to hit the flame imp, or sorry, to hit the flame waker. There we cool. go. So JJ in a pretty darn good position at this point. Dakota has answers in his hand, but this is a this is about a board battle, and he's losing it. Yeah, but I don't know here. I mean, he can frost bolt. Ping off the one one and trade, and then play Mad Scientist, and all he's left with on the board is a two two Dark Peddler and and an egg. Well, here's the problem: is Freeze Mage is I'm sorry, not Freeze Mage. Uh, Temple Mage is operating on one card a turn after this, where Super JJ is operating on two cards a turn after this, um, and that's where the difference comes in. The free the the Mage can often answer everything that's coming in. The problem is being able to answer everything that's coming in and then also keep up with it. Yeah. yeah, power overwhelming. Just Iron Beagle power overwhelming is honestly probably two of the best ones he could have picked up this turn. Just shut off the secrets and keep the gas going. I mean, I really don't hate Dakota's position in this match, but it is just going to be it's still really hard. Uh, you talk about the card advantage, but you also have to keep in the fact that in order to gain that card advantage, you're giving up health. Yeah, the eight eight is. Certainly going to make this hard. A counterspell draw doesn't. That's not doing anything right now. <laughs> oh, there's the flame cannon. Oh, it stings. Yeah. Polymorph four. This is kind of so he pushes four damage. You can push Super JJ down to uh, twenty. No, this is going to go through. Wow, Ooh, mad scientist. That's a pretty sick drop from the pilot shredder. So we do have a spectator uh, bug up on JJ's hand. We'll get it fixed as quickly as we can, but that means he drew a second Sea Giant! Oh my gosh. That's so good right now. Counterspell Polymorph 4 and trade in. Trying to cut into this damage as much as he can, but... This is going to be a tough one. He's he's taken eight more damage this turn. Yeah. And we see power overwhelming in the hand. He's going to keep tapping. Lothar gets picked up. Now, yeah. he does have to be concerned with Mirror Entity a little bit. Yeah. He's not concerned. I mean, he's... Oh, he's actually going to trade... Oh, this is actually kind of smart because he knows Dakota's running Counterspell. Um, so this, like, splits his threats up. This just, like, forces Dakota to trade and have a burn spell uh, but, to keep things short up here. Oh, this is going to be incredibly close. Because JJ, he is going to be getting two cards a turn, but his cards overall are going to be much poorer quality. And is he going to completely whiff? Doesn't completely whiff, but, I mean, that might as well be a whiff because now super jj has to might not have anything on the board next turn to play power overwhelming and his implosion will just hit a counter spell wow this might have backfired Arcane oh my missiles goodness. i oh, think that man. dakota just took over this game yeah well yeah there we go okay wow yeah, Dakota's, i don't know this is a big lead 
I can't believe this turnaround happened. This is this is such a tough matchup for for the for the tempo mage. Just everything panned out right. The power of Loming here gonna get counterspelled, follow up with implosion. I think he needs to get lucky on the implosion though. It's gonna take the uh, safer route, and sure he takes that out. This is tough. I kind of like this play. Just keep the keep choking. Keep the board, the board off. clear. Yep, yep, that's exactly right. And he knows that as long as he keeps the board clear, he's going to be able to eventually push enough damage. Did he? Oh no, he used the attack for the uh, for the Nerubian egg. Yeah. Oh, oh implosion! Oh, oh, oh! It stings so bad. Uh, it's still though, uh, JJ. Not out of it yet, but Lothab. This is definitely Flame Cannon. Yeah. And don't even need to see the attack first, just because you're probably going to be able to ping off whatever lives. Wow. And that's good. Cleans the board once again, pushes two more damage, and JJ, if he taps, he's just playing into lethal right there. And that might be the end of the road for JJ in this tournament. And Dakota might 3-0 his way from the semifinal in. Lame imp. Oh my gosh. He's gotta he's gotta taunt this up though. He doesn't have an option. Yeah, but you know, any spell at this point, Frostbolt ends the game. He doesn't have any fireballs left. Arcane blast does it Some as guy. well. He can arcane blast, ping in, and make the attack with the low theb. Yeah, that's gonna do it. Wow. Three zero from Dakota. Very well played from him in these games. I mean, you know, he's he's getting the cards. To, uh, to make these plays, but boy, let me tell you what, his play has been tight in these ones. And it's, I, I mean, I, I'm not seeing mistakes from this guy. He's just no. playing very solid Hearthstone. Yeah, he he's he's playing quickly, but he's he's playing well, and you can see he is in the zone, not moving. You see the fist pump at the end, the intensity from Dakota after taking that match. And Super JJ, even though he played, I, I think he played exceptionally uh, so far over the matches that we've seen him featured in on stream here, but his run is going to end at the semifinals. Uh, like I said earlier, he will go away with uh, $750, or sorry, $700 plus five Hearthstone Championship Tour points for his third, fourth finish. Um, but, I mean, getting 3-0'd in the semifinals never feels good. Yeah, I mean, just, I mean, a good run for him. You know, it's kind of, same spot as Ray. It's like, it's going to sting right now. Down the line, though, you're like, yeah, I did have a pretty good performance in the tournament. Yeah. I'm happy with it. <laughs> Yeah, he, he beat a lot of great players. Uh, we saw him at red in the first match of the day. Took out Nossum in a best-of-five series. So, well played to him, though. But Dakota is going to move on to the Grand Finals. So, the Grand Finals is set. It is going to be Astrogation from New Order Esports versus Dakota. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. should be exciting. Get to see some of these players have a chance to uh, make a name for themselves or, in Astrogation's case, make a, a little bit of a bigger name for himself. We're going to have to go to a break, and we're going to have to give Dakota a chance to reset before we jump into that grand finals. But don't go anywhere, because the conclusion to the Hearthstone Major at PAX East will continue right after this break.